Welcome to Mrs. Anderson's Nutrition and the next episode of the Nutrition Through the Ages series. In this video, we will look at the nutrition needs of adults ages 30 through 65. So let's first look at macronutrients. Macronutrients are the nutrients the body requires in large amounts, and they are what make up our total caloric intake. Carbs are our brain's primary source of energy, and we need about 45 to 65% of our total food intake to come from carbs. Complex carbs like whole grains, veggies, lentils, beans, and nutrient-rich, simple carbs like fruits are beneficial. Fats are needed to support brain functions. Fats also help cushion and insulate the body, and fats are needed to absorb some vitamins like A, D, E, and K. We need about 25 to 35% of our total food intake to come from fats. Avocados, peanut butter, nuts, oil, seeds, and fish are good sources of fats. Protein is needed to repair the cells in our bodies and to make new ones. We need about 10 to 35% of our total daily food intake to come from protein. Whole grains, lentils, beans, eggs, nut butters, fish, and dairy are all good sources of protein. Now, calories are not a macronutrient, but they're worth mentioning here as they are the fuel our body uses to survive. Calorie needs can be determined by listening to our body's hunger and satiety cues. Moving into micronutrients, these are the nutrients our bodies need in smaller amounts, but they are just as essential as macronutrients. So how can we make sure we are getting the nutrients our bodies need? As with every other age group, a balanced and varied diet will sufficiently provide what we need. And since nutrition can feel so confusing, mostly due to all of the misinformation out there, let's talk about five solid nutrition practices that are helpful and not harmful. Incorporating a variety of foods into your diet is our number one practice. Every food offers its own unique combination of nutrients. If our goal is to consume sufficient amounts and types of nutrients, we want to vary what we eat. Variety includes eating from all of the food groups, protein, grains, veggie, fruits, and dairy, dairy depending on your feelings around it. Variety also includes eating different foods from the same food groups. Fun fact, there are over a thousand vegetables in existence. Plenty of opportunity to diversify your rotation. Variety includes eating foods that offer different colors and flavors. Bell peppers are green, red, orange, yellow, even white and purple, and they all offer different flavors and nutrients. And lastly, variety includes preparation and cooking. Do you love raw broccoli? Great, try it steamed. Nutrient availability can change with how we prepare our foods. Variety is the key. So many suggestions around supposed healthy eating involve removing individual foods and even whole food groups from the diet. This is restriction or subtraction. However, research supports the opposite. Every single food, and especially whole food groups, provide an array of nutrients. When we remove or avoid certain foods and food groups, we are missing out on potential nutrient availability. Try adding new foods and different foods to increase the amount of nutrients consumed. Plus, restriction just leaves us feeling unsatisfied and limited by our options. Eating enough fiber is our third nutrition practice. Fiber does a number of things for our body, depending on the type. Soluble fiber dissolves in water, and this means it slows our digestion, allowing nutrients to be absorbed. It also helps push food through our intestines to keep them moving. Insoluble fiber can't be digested, so it scrubs our insides as it works its way through. This keeps bits of food from getting stuck in any nooks and crannies, and it also keeps our good bacteria happy and healthy since insoluble fiber is actually their favorite food. But fiber isn't just about digestion. It's hugely influential to our overall health. Fiber keeps us full longer. Fiber reduces blood pressure. Fiber reduces LDL cholesterol and is suggested to reduce triglyceride levels. Fiber increases HDL cholesterol. The point is, fiber does so much for our bodies. Try to consume enough to meet the recommended levels. Fiber recommendations are 21 to 25 grams a day for women and 30 to 38 grams a day for men. Most adults are only achieving half of this recommendation per day. Our fourth beneficial nutrition practice is placing plants forward. A plant-forward or plant-based diet is much more inclusive than most people believe. 
These diets do not restrict meats and animal products completely from the diet. Instead, a plant-forward diet emphasizes the consumption of plants, fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, oils, etc. as high priority. If you think about a traditional American meal, one might imagine meat at the center with some veggies, fruits, or grains on the side. A plant-forward diet simply rearranges that center focus to turn those side dishes into more prominent featured players. As noted many times throughout this series, an adequate and varied diet will support health and overall quality of life without having to do much else. Eating our nutrients through foods remains the gold standard when it comes to nutrient intake. An easy little motto is foods first, supplements second, especially when there are no current health issues or concerns. Keep in mind that there will absolutely be situations where supplementation can be advantageous, especially if some nutrient need can't be reached through diet alone, or if some sort of illness, age, or other influence like drugs, smoking, and alcohol interferes with nutrient absorption. And that about does it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.